sitting on the floor. Why? Okay, so you started. Oh, yeah. I have started. I have started. It's on. Yes. Father, thank you for giving us another day, another great opportunity to come before you with thanksgiving and to be able to look and see what your word has for us today. We need you. We have a lot of problems in this world. It's going to be pretty stupid when we left you. There's no place for truth. There is no place for honest evaluations of situations, troubles, and all kinds of things come in our lives. We have everybody to come up with a solution, they think. Help us today as we go through and look in your word and show that the folly that we present and try to offer you causes damnation, degradation. And the only hope that we have is for you to come and exercise your judgment in the earth. Woe to them that will not listen and heed and feel that they have their own perspective of truth that is universal and absolute and grant to others with their mouth that truth is individual and exclude you in the process. Help us as we go through and look the prophet Micah and what said and to compare a man that felt that your truth was something that was optional. Help us today so that we can look at your word and grow and stop being the kind of people that are detriment to this world. Amen, amen, and amen. When the Most High talks and I talked about him on Tuesday night. And I said judgment is going to come completely upon all because it's going to be imposed on the world. In the same manner that the sunlight is imposed on the world, we don't get to control that. Rain is imposed on the world. In the same way that logic is imposed on the world and you never see it. Categories imposed upon this world thoughts that are very real they are imposed on the world and we'll never get to see them but they're real we have a tendency in this world to act as if we don't have a most high god but judgment fits in the same category as all of the other things that I mentioned, and I didn't mention not even one fiftieth of what is imposed upon this world. But judgment is imposed upon this world. If it's not imposed on this world, it's a figment of our imagination and it's just somebody's wishful thinking. Without judgment being imposed upon this world, the oppressed, forever will remain the oppressed with no vindication. Those that have been robbed, pillaged, heritage taken from them, there was no hope. They cried out, believing the truth that the Most High God is the avenger of those that are oppressed, that his son came to set the captive free, to bring comfort to the oppressed, and that it was a lie. That it was somebody else's, what they call truth, but it wasn't the truth. It was just a perspective. It was just a preference of thought. For instance, during my days when I loved ice cream so much, and I realized that ice cream was making my stomach swell to dimensions 
that was that was so bad that it almost started making me look feminine. Because I would get at night this little thing of Hagen dogs, butter pecan ice cream. Then I learned about macadamia nut. I, I, I never understood growing up what you would call poor, you know, poor. I, I noticed people from up north when they would meet us or we would see them, they treated us as if we were backwoods. They would treat us as if we were, we, I didn't know the term poor black trash. They're like you all were not as sophisticated as us. I, I understand why now. I understand the difference in the North and the South. I understand the difference between people that have been around what you call poor white trash and those that have been around people that were able to get jobs in factories and, and they were able to get union jobs up North. I understand how the class concept come in, but I, I can understand why a little bit of ice cream at that time could be like $2.75 to $3 when the other kind was a dollar. Then I ate some. Tell you who broke me into that. I, this, I'm going somewhere with this. A woman named Ruth Oliver. She was the wife of my first pastor, John William Oliver. And she had some ice cream one day. And I asked her, I said, why did this ice cream taste? Tastes different. It's good. She said, well, you have to buy, you have to buy the kind. It costs a little, it costs more. You have to buy good ice cream to have good ice cream. Even then, I felt some kind of a way in the way that it was say it was like it was snooty. But it didn't mean it wasn't true. So I sometimes you did I didn't want a whole box of Briar's ice cream. That was Briar's. I go to the store one day and I try the Hagen dazs and I would eat on it every night. I, you eat it while you watch TV and it would melt. So it's not like you're eating really, it's almost like you're eating a milkshake. And I would eat on it. And it did something to me that ought not be done. <laughs> it gave me pleasure as long as I ate it. I mean pleasure, sensual pleasure. Uh -oh. <laughs> yes, food is food deals with the uh, deals with sensation, yes, physical yes, sensation. Yes, we well, often we just think of sex, but it's the same way that people eat on. Something that was given by a man, I'm going to call his name Jacques Derrida. He did something called the deconstruction of knowledge. And in deconstruction of knowledge, he says, every reading that you read of something is a misreading. I, I don't know how he did, how he failed to apply that to what he was writing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he was going. And so what happened is they eat on that. They take something of yours, and if they lie, no, that's my truth. They eat on that. And they eat on being able to do things to people and say, no, it wasn't wrong. I felt this way. I was born this way. Let me give you a case in point. Let, let's just say you take a person and say, I like having sex with animals. And you say that's wrong, but they say, I'm born that way. You can't judge me. Well, then you have another man say, I, I'm a man and I like men. I was born that way. You let this man get away with it, but another man go and he go and kill people. Say he go shoot up people in the church. Nine of them. His name is Dylan Ruth. If we're going to say that as long as the person says I was born that way, it doesn't matter what the truth is. There really is no truth. What becomes the truth is how you were born and how you frame it. No justice gets to be done. So the man whose wife doesn't come home at night or the man that, the woman that, uh, that doesn't come home at night, he is able to say, I was busy and you have no right to ask me what I was doing. We live in a culture where God's word has been thrown behind our back and we enjoy, we indulge in it every day like I would indulge in that hagen -Dazs. And we try to fix the solutions. We try to bring solutions to the world when we talk about injustice. See, if I say racism, people shut down. When I say injustice, theft, plundering, generational plundering has taken place. 
murder has taken place, children are trafficked all over the world. We look at that and we, we see it has happened. But then we want to say we want to find a solution to it, and we all going to come together. This person say, "I believe in Jesus. I believe in Yahshua. I believe in the Buddha. I believe in karma. I believe in atheistic uh, secularism. I believe that everybody can work out their own problem with truth." And you're supposed to come together and have a solution, and yet we are saying there's no truth. And we're going to solve the problems of the world. And we're going to ignore that the most high God, say, I created the heaven and earth. I created the sun, the moon, the stars, time, seasons, etc. We remove him from our mindset. And once we do that, we remove the truth of reality, construct justice and we keep eating on it and wondering why are we getting fat and lazy and sloppy and our relationships don't look good in their clothes and that we're trying to squeeze <laughs> we're trying to squeeze a, a size 44 bottom into a size 38 pants that is cutting off the circulation I've seen women sometimes try to squeeze a whole, see a woman try to squeeze a whole lot into a dress. And if they are made um, in the way our sisters are made, that I'm proud that God made that way, the skirt is longer in the front than it is in the back. Well, so much for my little humor. Let's go into and look and see how this fits our world today. We're going to look at a man. We're going to talk about Zedekiah, but we're going to get to it from the book of Michael. So first thing I need to do is go ahead and share my magnificent screen. Is my screen sharing? I don't know what you said. Was it fun? If you did, tell me what you say. It's that important. It is that important. Okay, <laughs> here, here's our title for the day. It's long. I'll probably do some reduction to it, but it, I needed to get it out. <laughs> yeah, reduction. When people cast the word of God behind their backs, they eliminate, quote, the truth, unquote, from the interpretation of world events and problems. And they keep eating ice cream. Wait. I, 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 I just added that extra, okay? <laughs> Okay. When people cast the word of God behind their backs, they eliminate the truth from the interpretation of world events and problems. So because we can talk, we can talk about injustice all day long, but if you don't have the truth about it, everyone just has their preference on how they feel about it. No truth. Then the A, the subset of that is. Then the denial of absolute truth leads one to claim that everyone owns truth individually without the most high God's approval. Do we own truth? Do we own truth? Uh, we have, we've allowed truth to own us. So that, that's, as we go through, I won't be given that whole title. I'll just say that we've eliminated truth. Now we don't have it. Let's look at what I was talking about. We've gone through the book of Micah. We've seen how they, we've seen the atrocities without me going through all of the atrocities. If a person is interested in understanding the book of Micah, there are many commentaries. I think I own maybe 50 on the book of Micah. You can find some online, but if you want to listen to it in the vein and how I approach the book so that it'll have relevancy, you can go to YouTube. You can go back on my Facebook and see where I've dealt with it. Again, I was told, and I would like it if people would go ahead and put a like on my, on my page, share it, subscribe. But if you don't do that, and don't want to promote it, that's fine. I'm going to keep teaching. Amen. 
So what I want us to do is I want us to understand Micah has done something that's very important for people to understand. And I want to break it down like this. Why is this kind of thing so important? It's important for one reason. Let's go to Psalms 9 and 16. I need us to understand why the truth of God is so important. If there is no truth of God, there is no justice of God. If there is no justice of God or judgment of God, you better just, all you got to do is move to one part of a country to another part of a country and what you did might be legal. In Psalms 9 and 16, it says, Yahweh is known by his judgment with he executed. The Lord, the Lord is known by the judgment in which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked is snared by his eating ice cream. The wicked is snared by ignoring the truth that the Most High God has said. And now you're trying to take all of the things that happen in the world. You're trying to have a network of convictions to understand the world, all of the effects in the world, and every action that you have in the workout problem. You would call that a worldview. But for those that don't like that term, your glasses, you are removed, you have put on a set of glasses that uh, make you see everything foggy, dirty. When my windshield gets like that and it starts to mist and not really rain, that's scary. I have to pull off the road and get where I can see. Verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell, the shit to the to the disembodiment of their body. In other words, you, you're going to be disembodied. You'll still be you. The body will be there. We'll be turned into hell and all of the nations that forget God. One of the beautiful things that I like that when it talks about the wicked being turned into hell, every individual that's wicked. And the nations, the families, and it says, for the needy shall not always be forgotten. Now, this is the truth. You can eat ice cream and feel like, you know, when you die, you die. You can take that ice cream as what you call your truth. Yah has spoken. It says, the expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Yahweh, let not man prevail. Lord, don't let the ice cream eaters, those that remove your word and throw it behind their back and call themselves making truth, which means they can rob you, they can rape you, they can take your land, they can remove your heritage, they can take your children, they can sell your children, they can sell your body parts, they can tell you like Charles Stanley told people, I know people mourn his death, but I know when I used to listen to Charles Stanley when I was growing up and I was living right, this man said there's no kind of sin that you can do to turn God against you, and I turned away from God because he said you'd only lose rewards. I've gone over his teachings. I went over his book, Eternal Security, and he said you can do suicide and still be saved. You can go out and cheat on your wife and still be saved. You can go and murder and still be saved. I know he taught that. Challenge me, if you will. Then it says, 19th verse, arise. Arise, O Yahweh, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Yahweh, that the nation may know themselves to be but men. That the nations may know that they are, be, they are but men. What this psalm is saying, let your truth which emanates from your character rule, impose it on the world. Let them know all that they're doing is eating ice cream. They are not changing reality. They are not dismissing judgment. You'll hear people talk about, we, we believe in the gospel of inclusion. God doesn't exclude any, everybody, anybody. You have what they call universalism. Universalism means no matter how you live, everybody's eventually going to heaven. The psalmist say, arise, O Lord. Arise, do your thing. Huh? For real. If you will, go with me to Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 16. Those that know John 3, 16, 
I want you to learn Ezekiel 316 and let that be a part of your mindset. Ezekiel 3, 16, and listen to what the word of God says. Now, this is during the time Micah had prophesied that the Most High God did not like them throwing his word behind them, their back and establishing what they felt was true and establishing listening to false prophets and letting them tell them that they could live outside of what God said. It, the imposition of God was not a big deal, okay? So listen to what Yah tells them during the time that judgment is coming. It says that it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of Yahweh, the word of uh, Yahuwah, in other words, this is the embodiment. They call this sometime a Christophany, the big words. They use. It just mean Christ before he was born, he was spirit. Or it's called, sometimes they call it a theophany. I'm telling you this, probably won't say it again today. I don't need those big words. I, I need to understand them when I'm reading stuff. But anyway, it said that the word of the Lord came unto me saying, this is Ezekiel saying, son of man, I have made thee a watchman to the house of Israel. I have made you to watch, to warn people, to protect people, to give them the truth about situations, how to see the world, how to problems and to come up with solutions. I have made you a watch Israel. Therefore, hear the word and give them warning from me. The original intent of the prophet is to warn the world, hear my words. My words are faithful. My words are truthful. My words never fail. I don't lie. It doesn't matter if you ignore them in so far as what's going to happen and you eat your ice cream and you're comfortable with it, putting more and more fat on you so that I can't reach your heart. You believe in lies. He says, warning them from me, verse 18, when I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die and you give it to him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked, from his wicked way to save his life. What? Warning him to do what? Notice what the warning is for, to save his life. That same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. What you have done when you hear the truth of mine and you don't want to upset the people they told Micah don't prophesy no more. The prophets didn't want to prophesy. We got our own prophets. They didn't want it, they didn't want Isaiah to prophesy. They did not want Elijah to prophesy. They wanted the Messiah to shut up, give us Barabbas. He said, when you don't do it, because truth matters. I will require his blood. Will I require it to hand the same as if you murdered him? Blood guilt. And yet people will praise Charles Stanley. They will praise other preachers like Bob George. They will pre praise all these people that tell you once you're saved, you're always saved, irrespective of what you do, and not warn them. And you'll keep eating that ice cream. It feels comfortable. Imagine if you're fornicating and you enjoy it. And here comes somebody saying, God says a fornicator will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what Paul said in New Testament. And Paul said, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. But another preacher saying, you won't lose salvation. It's not yours anyway, salvation of the Lord. It's his salvation. You either enter into it or you enter out of it. But you eat that ice cream and you enjoy it. And you keep getting sadder and sadder in your sin. You engorge yourself. Then you might learn to do it with other kind of beings. That's all I'm going to say right now. He said that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at your hand. In the book of Micah, Michael was saying, the real issue with you all, you don't do justice. You don't do justice. You steal, you plunder, you beat, you rob, you get houses, you make people work for free. Same thing that happened in America. And yet, 
when the abolitionists and some of the preachers preached against it, they said, what can we do? This is how this is our means of wealth. This is our means of comfort. You keep eating that ice cream. You keep eating it over and over again. Why? Because it's easier to treat truth as if it's ice cream, a preference and not the truth. See, it's not wrong if you like chocolate ice cream. And I say, I don't want chocolate. I want haagen dazs butter pecan. That's not dealing with an issue, dealing with life, justice, et cetera. That's the preface to my taste bud. It's very subjective. Let's look at verse 19. Yet, if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked ways, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. I remember one time a man said this to me, and I'm going to say what he said. I'm going to say it the nice way first, but I'm going to show you how vulgar, how hard he was to me. He said, you always busted my butt when you preach. Mm -hmm. But I think he was trying to off put me when he said, I don't like to hear you preach because you always busted my ass. I said, you needed it. You see, because some people think the word ass is a cuss word. Really, it comes from when we talk about the jackass being stubborn as a jackass. But I, I bought a book on what we call cussing. And most of the time, it's not cussing. Cur cur cursing really is, is trying to bring an imprecatory thing against an individual that don't deserve it or one that does deserve it. If you want to learn about curses, go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and look at the 16th verse following and watch Moses cuss the people out. I mean, he really cursed them out. Y'all don't want to change? Cursed in the fields, cursed in the home, cursed in the store, cursed in the basket, cursed. I mean, you won't talk about cursing. Verse 20, yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked ways, he shall die in iniquity. You have delivered thy soul again when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity. And I lay a stumbling block before him and he die because he has not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he has done shall not be remembered. Is this what we teaching? Those of us that say we teaching the word of God, have we left this out? Are we giving people ice cream? Are we giving them the truth? Are we giving them the absolute unchanging invariant truth? Are we giving them preference? But his blood choir at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou dost warn the righteous man and the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. That's the original intent of the gospel. It was to give people, the gospel, the word of God is to give man the truth about what he is supposed to be in the earth, what his relationship is to the most high God, what his relationship will be with one another, and how to go about to understand the world, to be able to interpret the things that happen, to evaluate all of the things that you experience to evaluate the situations that you're in so that you know how to run a school, how to run a family, how to treat your neighbors, what to do to the murderer, what to do to the rapist, what to do when an individual has been accused falsely. I want you to have my mindset in the rule of the world with absolute truth. Now, for those that say there is no truth, then there will be no Jesus or Yeshua. He says, I am the way, I am the truth. If you tell me everyone has their own truth, they replace the most high son with ice cream, a preference. The Bible says in John 17, 17, the Messiah says to the disciples, well, he says for the disciples to the father, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. When you tell me that truth is an individual perspective of preference, you remove that individual from being able to deal with life situations in a way that can bring peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Listen to what the Bible says. 
in 1 Kings 14 and 9. All this is dealing with Michael because we've gone through and seen Michael warn the people. We've gone through and said Michael give the judgments is going to be. But I want you to I want you to see what led up to Judah's fall. We dealt with Israel's fall on Tuesday. It says in 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 9, but none, I mean, but thou hast done evil above all that are before thee. But thou hast gone and made the other gods, other truths, other ways of seeing the world, other ways of solving your problems. You have gone and made the other gods molten images to provoke me to anger and have cast me behind thy back. This is what Yah was warning the people when he gave them the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other God before me. You will have no other authority among me. If I tell you marriage is honorable, it's honorable. If I tell you not to murder somebody, don't have another opinion of a molten God or a friend or a, a judge or a president or a king that you can put to be an ultimate authority. Ultimate authority is truth. The day that you can go and say, well, you know, um, I only listen to what the Buddha says. Well, let me check and see if the Hindu Vedas agree. Then the Buddha is not your ultimate truth. When the word of God says, I am the truth, there is no one to authenticate and validate him above himself because that, that would be your ultimate. So the moment you say you have your truth and I have my truth, when you tell me you have your truth, you're telling me you're the ultimate authority because you're telling me you got the ability to get grant me to have my truth. So if I pull a gun out on you or raise a knife to your throat and you tell me I can't do that, I said, why? Because it's wrong, but you told me I have my truth. My truth is I can do this and I can take your Maserati. I can take your money. Isn't that what people do? They take your identity. Isn't that what they do? We want to take this land right here. We'll use eminent domain. Isn't this what people do when they say they have their truth? All you are is you haven't fully evolved. You don't have the smarts. You can't take care of yourself. Well, we'll put you on chips and take you from Africa. And we'll make you slaves and say you don't have a soul. And we'll get science to say it. Isn't it the same thing that people do when they take a girl or somebody off the street? Playing? Kidnap her? You're saying that your truth overrides her being a person. And now you can sell her body parts and send her out and do child trafficking. Yahweh says, you have no other God before me. And this is why he was angry. You did this evil and you made your God's molten images to provoke me to anger and cast me behind your back. They say, Tim, this other stuff leads to money. The Bible talks about money as being the, the love of money being the root of all evil. And it calls it mammon because if you think money is dollar bills and that's all that money's ever been, been you haven't read your Bible. You don't know what a shekel of gold was, was, do you? You don't know what a shekel of silver was. I'm sure that you don't understand that. You don't understand in some places they trade rocks for uh, for, for um, means of exchange. Those, those glass beads. Glass beads. Yeah. Money in, in Virginia during the times when they were enslaving us was in the form of tobacco. 100 pounds, 50 pounds, whatever is used for a medium exchange. So money, you think money is what we said. The love of money or mammon, riches. Look at money as being riches. And you put that before me. Let's look at one more list and then we're going to move on. Listen, what, listen to what Ezekiel says during the time of the captivity. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh Elohim, the Lord God, because you have forgotten me, the source of truth, the very truth itself, you have forgotten me and have cast me behind thy back. Therefore, bear thou also thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. In other words, when the problems come up from your lewdness, and your whoredom, and people being killed, and people being trafficked, and you're having all this murder in the land. Bear it. That's the ice cream you ate. Let your stomach get swole fat, get have heart disease, die. 
have kidney failure, can't wear your clothes, get fat shamed, bear your lewdness. See, I can say this because I, I see I, I can talk like this because my way to go up and down unless I go to the gym, I swell up. <laughs> then I look in the mirror and I think, okay, you're married. Uh, you gonna do this to her? <laughs> he don't say it. <laughs> What'd you say, girl? She said, yes, y'all. <laughs> okay, then it says, then Yahweh said more over to me, son of man, wilt thou judge a hola and a hola ba? Yea, declare unto them their ad, their abominations. This is who Micah dealt with. Now, Micah taught around 750 BC to 701. So it goes down like this till you get down to the time of Christ. And I want you to look at something that we're talking about in Micah. Let's go to Micah 4 and 10. <clears throat> Micah 4 and 10. This is, it's actually the same kind of name. Okay. Uh, the name means the same. Micaiah, the one that got slapped in the face by the other, I think it was this other Zedekiah that slapped him. Yeah, which, which way did that spirit go when they let? Because I don't want to hear the truth. It says, Be in pain. He's talking, he, Micah is talking to, to Judah and he's talking to Israel. He says, Be in pain. And labor and bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. But now you shall go forth out of the city, you're gonna be taken away, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go to Babylon. There you shall be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Oh, you can read that as a oh, he's so good. He's gonna redeem them. It's just like Jeremiah said in this in back in this time. And Jeremiah says, uh, you know, I know the plans that I have for you. I have the plans for you of good and not evil, and I want to establish you without. And then you don't read the best. They're never could never gonna come there and kill the women. Kill the children, the old and the young, and let you be dog and animal squeeze on the ground. He says, dong on the ground. I know dong must mean something like what we say, uh, but I ain't gonna say it because people have tender ears. But he said, you're gonna be, you're gonna be left on the ground for the beast of the field and the fowl of the air. What happens when an animal eat meat? You ever walked in the yard of somebody that raised dogs? I have. And I had to go to the holes, take my shoe, and turn the holes on to clean out my shoes. Be careful. <laughs> he says, but he said, you're going to go to Babylon. That's the problem. When he said, you're going to go to Babylon and be delivered, that means you're going to be captive. That's what Micah said. It came to pass. I want you to look at something. Micah prophesied during the days, listen of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. Isaiah goes back one father further. He goes back to Isaiah, who is sometimes called Azariah. I call him Azariah, but I met a lady from Ethiopia. And I asked her, I said, what's your son name? She said, Azariah. I said, Azariah? She said, it's in the Bible. Spell it. I said, we call it Azariah. So, you know. She more probably more right than I am. I mean, you live in that part of the country, but anyway. So he goes back to Isaiah, Jotham, and Ahaz. And then the reason that I'm bringing this up is that we're dealing with truth. When you cast the Most High's word behind your back, when you cast it behind your back, and you cause things to come to pass that shouldn't in your life. And I really, really, really wanted to bring that up. My link is not opening. I don't know what's going on with my link. Hmm. Very disconcerting. So what I'm going to do, see, I, I, I like my links to open and I'm trying to figure out what happened. I'm going to delete this and then try it this way. Nope. No, it, it's, it's okay. Uh, it, what what it was is that these people did not believe that God was going to do what they what He said, 
and at the time Babylon, because I know, I mean, because my, let's say if the lights went off, I still need to know my material. So what was happening during that time, I just like to give receipts. At the time when these things were prophesied about Babylon, Babylon was very small. At the same time, Babylon was still under Assyria. And by Babylon still being under Assyria at that time, they didn't have any way to believe for the people that did not believe, you know, that Yah spoke truth, that Babylon would ever be able to take them into captivity because they were they were under themselves. So after about two or three kings like Shennacherib and, and different ones, they then were able to raise up and fight against Babylon. And then around, I think, 612, they became their own nation. And so I'm bringing this up to let you know that when the Most High speaks, it's not like ice cream. It's the truth. It didn't look like it could happen. Maybe if they said Assyria would be able to do this, they'd believe. So this, I'm getting somewhere with this. Let's go to the Second Kings. I want you to see when the Most High was prophesied during Isaiah's time. Remember, I say they prophesied both. Isaiah said you're going to be carried into Babylon. Listen to what happens here in Second Kings chapter twenty. What has happened is the Most High God has, have you ever heard the, I won't want to call it story, the episode or, or the life event when Hezekiah got sick and he was about to die and that he prayed and he told God how he had served him and loved him and done these things and the Most High was gracious and let him live. Um, so now Hezekiah has requested to live instead of die. Now he's going to live too long. Because he should have went on to let God kill him. I mean, put him to death. But listen what happened after he was healed. In 2 Kings 20 and 14, it says, Then came Isaiah the prophet unto the king Hezekiah and said, What did these men? In other words, after he got well, people from Babylon came to visit him and tell him how much we're, we're glad that you live, you know, give you your honor and stuff like that. And he, this, this Quaton, he took him in and showed him stuff inside the temple. Listen, listen to him. What did these men and which came there? And Hezekiah said, oh, they come from a far country, even from Babylon. See, Babylon, not the big deal then. Because eventually Babylon's going to own, so it says it's a far country, Babylon's going to own Jerusalem. It says, and he said, what have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, all the things that are in my house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. And Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the words of Yahweh. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and all which thy fathers have laid up in store until this day shall be carried unto Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith Yahweh. And thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace, the king of Babylon. Josiah, do you know what a eunuch is? I, 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 it can be without the penis, and it can be cut. I, I like it that he real. Because I mean, it, it dude in high school, okay? I'm sure he's heard way more than penis, which is the Latin word for tail. But uh, the, 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 so you didn't know that? Well, I mean, I am a couple of years older than you. I ought to know at least one or two things that I, you don't know. You know some things I don't. But what happened is, is that he's shown them all of this. He's going to make them eunuch. And sometimes they may have another type of operation where a man will not be able to have an erection or ejaculate and bring seed. But we, in other words, we're going to let you, you can work around our women and we don't have to worry about you. Follow me? So this is what he said. But this is because he did this. He showed them all his stuff, his pride, his glory. He said, they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. This doesn't sound like it could happen at this time. And Hezekiah, listen, this is, this is sickening. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, good is the word spoken by Yahweh, which thou hast spoken. And he said, is it not good if there's peace in my day? Now notice, where did that come from? Where did that come from? He's saying that this is not happening right now, but I'm going to leave it on my children's children. Good that it ain't happening to me. Do I need to read it again? Was I clear? 
Then it says, and the rest of the acts of Hezekiah, I, I don't want to go with the rest of the acts of Hezekiah. He's done enough right there to, to, to bother me. Let's see if God's word is coming to pass. Isaiah says in the 39th chapter of the book of Isaiah, because I read that to you in Kings. And whichever scribe wrote Kings told of the story. Let's listen to what Isaiah says to him. Isaiah 39 and 7. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which you shall beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then, then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, good is the word of the Lord, which thou hast spoken. He said, moreover, there shall be peace and truth in my day. Caring about himself. So let's see if it really took place. Remember, we're dealing with truth versus preference. Most of the kings didn't listen. Remember, I said, Isaiah prophesied during the days of Isaiah. He prophesied during the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. He had been prophesying way up until then. It's gotten this far, and now he's telling them where they're going to go. Micah told them where they were going to go as well. I'm just showing you that. Now, in the book of Daniel, this is during the time that it really happened. In the book of Daniel, chapter 1, Verse three, it says, and the king, well, they've already captured the people and they took the smart ones, okay? Josiah, you'd have to go, you, uh, you know. Uh, they, they were taking the boys, Naomi. I, they may have taken the women too, but they were taking the boys that they could make work in the king palace. And Josiah, would have, if he was going to go work in the king palace, let's see what would happen to Josiah. And the king spake to Espinaz, the master of the eunuchs, the master of the eunuchs that he should bring in certain children of Israel of the king's seed, royal, and of the princes, children to whom there was no blemish, well-favored, skillful in all wisdom, cunning, and knowledge, see, not dummies, and understanding science, and such had the ability in them to stand in the king's palace, whom they might teach the learning and tongue of the Chaldeans, of the Chaldeans, that we may teach you Away from what Yah has told you what the truth is about life, about worshiping other gods, about what to do about murder, what to do about rape, what to do about honoring father and mother. We're going to retrain you. That's what they call it sometimes. We're going to retrain you. First, we're going to make you a unit because we're putting you under the master of the unit. And now we're going to take away your culture and your heritage and your morality and give you ours. In other words, we see truth like ice cream, preference. Next verse. And the king appointed them daily provision of the king's meat and wine, and he drank that he drank and nourished them three years. It says that at the end thereof, they might stand before the king. So he gave them the stuff like that for three years, and they asked the king, could they not eat and not drink what they had? And uh, they did that through the man that was over them. And it's a man said, I, something happened to me. Y'all gonna be looking all scrawny and skinny and you're not gonna look like you all had a college football field meet, you know, because guys play college football, they get to eat. I mean, really, really get to eat. But you're working for the school. They're making billions. And they beg not to be able to eat that, but just give us pulse. And at the end of 10 days, y'all had blessed them that they looked better. They were bigger. They were thicker than everybody else. So that was fulfilled. We talked on Thursday that the judgment of Yahweh will always be done completely. Woe to those that it happens to. And in the case of Daniel and those young men, it was, it was bad for them, but Yah blessed them still. But the rest of the people that were still in Jerusalem, they suffered. Your dad just got through teaching that book about a few months ago. Let's look at 2 Chronicles 36. In 2 Chronicles chapter 36, listen to what happened. The people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's stead. And it says that he was 23 years old when he began to reign. He reigned three months in Jerusalem. Now, this Josiah is coming. You have, we went to Hezekiah. He said this was going to happen in his son's days. Hezekiah has a son named Ammon during those 15 years God gave him. Ammon, he has a son, and his son name is Josiah. So 
This is why Josiah is relevant here, okay? And the king of Egypt put him down in Jerusalem and condemned the land, a hundred uh, talents of silver and gold. Now he's having to pay because Micah had told him they were going into captivity. Josiah dies and the king of Egypt takes over Jerusalem it's like, what they got to do with Babylon? It's moving towards Babylon, but it's because they did not accept the truth of Yah. They accepted the truth of other gods, the high places. They offered their children to the fire. They treated God's truth as if it was not his, his absolute unchanging truth. They made it like God has his truth. Molech has his truth. Baal has his truth. We have our truth. They treated his word as if it was nothing. They threw it behind their back and they decided we will eat the ice cream of preference. We'll have our truth and not his. Then the king of Egypt made Eliakim his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem and he turned his name to Jehoiakim like you my dog. And like you buy a dog and they bring you the dog and say the dog's name Sissy. Are you going to let that dog name be Sissy? If you're a dog. Well, this is what kings would do. It says, and Necho, Pharaoh Necho took Jehoiakim's brother and carried him to Egypt. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. We always turn away from the Most High's word and think we're doing better. We're going to rule our kingdom better. We're going to be able to do the judgment because that's what kings do. But he did evil in the sight of Yah. What, what happens? Notice verse six, against him came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Just like he said it would happen. But all these little events took place. But Yah's word is true. And when you say that there's no truth, you're saying Yah does not know the end of a thing from the beginning. When he talks, it's just like somebody choosing between ice cream or when we tell people the truth, they'll say they got their truth, we got our truth. No, the truth that we have is repeating God's word like he said to Ezekiel, say my words. Against him came Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and bound him up in fetters to carry him to Babylon. Didn't he say he'd be carried to Babylon? He kept his word. Nebuchadnezzar also carried the vessels of the house of the Lord of Babylon and put him in his temple. Didn't he tell, didn't Isaiah tell this to Hezekiah this would happen? Truth matters. He could have spared himself. He could have listened according to Ezekiel. Next verse. And the rest of the acts of Jeho uh, Jehoiakim and his abomination, which he did and which were found in him. Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah and Jehoiachin, his son, reigned in his stead. We went through that. I want you to come down here and let's, let's get down to verse 10. And when the year expired, King Nebuchadnezzar brought him to Babylon in the goodly vessels of the house of the Lord. And Zedekiah, his brother, was king over Jerusalem. Here is the man that we wanted to get to. Here's the man that didn't accept God's word. Here's the man that said, God don't know what he's talking about. He said that truth was relative. I want you to see what are you reading from again? I'm reading from 2 Chronicles 36 and 10. Let me give you the background summary, then go read the text, okay? So the background summary, I'm going to the, uh, the antiquities. This is Josephus. This is the antiquities of the Jews. I want you to listen to this history. It says, I'm in antiquities book 10, number 7, 106. It says, Ezekiel also foretold in Babylon what calamities were coming upon his people, which when he heard, he sent accounts of them to Jerusalem. This is Ezekiel talking because God had already told him what was going to happen. But Zedekiah did not believe their prophecies for the following reason. I want you to hear the reason. It happened that the two prophets agreed with one another in what they said, as in all other things, that the city should be taken. It's like Isaiah said, and like Micah. And Zedekiah himself should be taken captive. But, 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 let's, let's 
story you're about to hear is true. The names have not been changed because the man is not innocent. It says, but Ezekiel disagreed with him and said, Zedekiah should not see Babylon. While Jeremiah said unto him, the king of Babylon should carry him away thither in bonds. And because they did, I did. And I'm going to read it again so you can hear it because this is important. Ezekiel disagreed with him. They both said they're going to be, going to be taken captive. They both said they're going to be under Babylon. But he said, Ezekiel disagreed with him and said, Zedekiah should not see Babylon. Remember, I'm quoting, I'm quoting Josephus. I'm While Jeremiah said unto him, the king of Babylon should carry him away thither in bond. And because they did not say the same thing as to the circumstance, he, he disbelieved what they both appeared to agree in and condemned them as not speaking the truth there. In other words, one thing I'm going to be carried to Babylon, the other thing I'm going to be carried to Babylon, the other thing I'm not going to see Babylon. I don't agree. They both wrong. They going against the laws of non-contradiction. So ain't no truth. But I know this much. I believe in what I believe in. I got my own truth. They wrong. Okay. It says, so all these things foretold him did come to pass according to their prophecy. We shall show how in a fitter opportunity. All right. So we don't have to wait on him. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 52 and 11. I mean, 52, 1 through 11. Listen, Zedekiah was 21 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutu, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did that, which was evil in the eyes of the Lord, according to Jer Jer Jehoiakim had done. For through the anger of Yahweh, it came to pass that in Jerusalem, Judah, he cast them out. Remember, he said he was going to cast them out. Remember, he said he was going to cast out the children when we went through the first chapter from his presence. That Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon, and it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, and in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came in his army against Jerusalem and pitched against it and built forts round about it. They made what you call siege. You can't go out and do trade. You all run out of food. You just run out of food. You can run out here and get killed, okay? We made a siege. It says that in the fourth month and in the ninth day of the month that the famine was sore in the city. You can't get food in and out. So that there was no bread for the people in the land. And the city was broken up and all the men of war fled and went forth out of the city by night by the way of the gate between the two walls, which was by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans were by the city round about and they went by the way of the plains. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho and all his army was scattered from him. And they took the king and carried him up unto the king of Babylon to Riblah. Not Babylon. They carried him to Riblah first, to the land of Hamath. And there he gave judgment upon him. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. He slew all of the princes of Judah in Riblah. Listen to this. Then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah the king of Babylon and bound him in chains and carried him to Babylon and put him in prison to the day of his death. This man, because he saw a difference, differences don't all the time mean it's inconsistency. One just added some more. One didn't say your eyes would be put out. One didn't say you wouldn't see it. He said, you go there. Well, let's see what happened. This is what happened. And notice what Ezekiel had said in Ezekiel 12 and 13, my net also will I spread upon him, he's on my Zedekiah, and he shall be taken in my snare, and I will bring him to Babylon to a land of the Chaldeans, yet he shall not see it, though he died there. Isn't that pretty? I love God to bust the wicked like he said he's going to bust the wicked when he says he's going to bust the wicked because they need to be busted. What do you mean busted? <laughs> this, this man was over and doing a lot of wickedness in the land and doing wrong. And so Jeremiah says, this is what was going to happen. And so they took him and they put him out. Now, how does that work for us today? We live in a world where they say truth is relative. 
Ezekiel had gotten the word from God. And he said, you better tell him. He told him. Ezekiel had, wouldn't, if he hadn't told him, he would be guilty of the death of Zedekiah, the king, and all those men. But he warned them. They chose their preference over God's word. They chose their preference on how to keep their city going, how to keep their kingdom going, how to deal with all of the injustices that were not taking place. I mean, that were taking place and the justices wasn't taking place. They came up with their own form. They didn't believe the truth. In essence, their life said there is no truth from these prophets. One saying, I'm going to go to, both of them saying, I'm going to Babylon. But it, one of them said, I ain't going to see it. I ain't going to believe neither one of them. Okay. Side rolls. Listen to what the Most High God says in his judgments. When we listen to what he says in his judgment and what God said, we're going to understand truth matters. In Psalms 50 and 14, the scripture said, offer to God thanksgiving and pay thy vows to the most high and call upon me in the day of trouble. The truth of the matter, if I'm your God or since I'm your God and I've told you how to deal with issues, why are you calling on Baal? Why are you calling on your president? Why are you calling on Marxism, socialism, why are you calling on Hindu, Hinduism? Why are you calling on your own mindset as if you got a truth, like you know everything about everything and you can speak the truth of what's going to happen? He said, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. But unto the wicked, God saith, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes? or that thou should take my covenant in thy mouth. You got other gods that you serve, and you're going to serve me too? He said, I, I, I told you, you shall have. Not just don't do it, you won't have it. You're not going to have me and them. You're not going to have another God before me. Seeing you hate instruction, and casteth my word behind thee. When you saw a thief, you consented. We have politicians throughout this earth that will agree with theft being taken from different people, the elderly, those that on Medicaid, theft being taken from other countries. We have other people that do that that are not politicians. He said, when you saw a thief, you consented with him. We've seen that all throughout the book of Micah. You have been a partaker with adultery. They, adultery, they call it, sometimes they call it swapping. Sometimes they, they call it, you know, um, orgies or whatever it is that they're doing. It says, you've been a partaker with adultery. Sometimes it's serving other gods, being a part of it, doing their holidays. He says, you give your mouth to evil and your tongue frame of deceit. You can tell a person once he's saved, he's always saved. You never have to obey God. God is not moved by your works. He's not moved by your faithfulness. I remember one time Charles Stanley said, if you're not faithful to God, he's still going to be faithful to you. He said it. It's in his book. I got it on my shelf, but sometimes I have to pull it out. Then it says, you sittest and speaketh against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. You're telling us as if it's the truth and y'all said you're a liar. He's true. He says, these things have you done and I kept silence and you thought I was altogether such as one as that's yourself. You thought that your truth influenced me. You thought that what you call truth is going to be how I judge the world. You cast me behind your back and set up your own standard. Do you see that? You thought that I was altogether such a one as thyself. That's what Judah thought. That's what Israel thought. That's what Eve thought. But we just like God. This is what we think when we outside of his will. He said, but I will reprove thee and set, the, and set them in order before thine eyes. My truth is imposed on you. It's going to be imposed on you. Just like everything else is. Now, consider that you that forget God, unless I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoso offers praise glorify me, and he that order his conversation aright, I will show. 
the salvation of God. Conversation says, he that will order his lifestyle, his mindset, the way he evaluates the world and experiences, how he deals with problems, going about getting solutions. I will show that individual my salvation. If you look with me on the screen, you'll see what come down salvation. That's Yeshua. The same where we get Jesus. Yeshua, uh, Yahashua, that means salvation. Last verse. Or last set of verses. Not that long. I read to you from the Psalms. I start out that we shall be turned in the hill and all of the nations that forget God. Truth, Yahweh will deliver the oppressed. True, He's going to judge those that are oppressed. True, that the Most High God, He doesn't want people having His word in His mouth. He's going to judge them harshly, according to what they think, but it's righteously according to His word. He's the truth. And then, and then, and then we see that the Most High God, throughout the Psalm, says, "I don't play. I don't put up with wickedness." And so listen to what Paul says to us in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Those that have been eating ice cream so much that they've gone to sleep. Those that, in other words, they take the soft way, what they want instead of the truth. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 14, wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepeth and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. Awake thou that are in the dark. Awake thou that need to get up from the sleep, which is from death, and Christ will give you light. Light gives you clarity. It helps you to understand and individuate things. And not only does it give clarity and helps to individualize things and make them where you can see what they are, it helps you see situations, to evaluate situations, and keep you from being ignorant. It says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days of evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not unwise, but understanding what the truth is. My word is given to warn, my word to give you life. Listen what he says in verse 18 and 19. That's where we stop. He says, and be not drunk with wine. Don't let wine take over you wherein is excess. He says, but be filled with the spirit. Speaking to yourself in Psalms. I, that's what I was reading, Psalms. Hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those very Psalms. They tell you the wicked shall be put in, turned into hell. And all of the nations that forget God. And that God would judge. And that God will lift up. And that he does execute righteous judgment. And that he's going to deliver the poor. Speak to yourself about those things. Not that and just let it go. Whatever happened back then happened. He's going to judge. Speak to yourself in Psalms. Speak to yourself in hymns. Speak to yourself in spiritual songs. Speak to yourself understanding that when you deal with God, he said he will deliver those that are in trouble. He said he will call upon him and he will lift them up. And he says to the wicked, if you're not going to do what I say, if you're not going to accept this truth, keep my name out of your mouth. He said, because the truth of the matter is you hate instruction and you cast my word behind you. And he said, I'm going to judge. He said, because you think I'm like you. That's what you look at. Speak to yourself in this kind of song. Those things that you've done when God didn't judge you right away or condemn you to death right away. He said, you think that I'm all together. Is you, you think your truth, what you call truth, which is only ice cream, a preference. You think I agree with your preference. He said, but guess what? I'm going to reprove. I'm going to tear you up. I'm going to set these things in order. And he said, consider this. You to forget God and set up your own standard of truth. Lest I tear you into pieces and there'll be none to deliver. Let's start dealing with truth the way it is.
Let's move away from our preferences. Let's move to the truth of God's word. God's word is not ice cream. When we cast his word behind our back, what we have done is we've determined that our truth supersedes his truth. And our truth is not even truth, just a lie, call it our truth. Begs the question, because you already have the answer in your statement. What are we gonna do you all? Are we gonna seek truth? Are we gonna honor truth? Are we gonna set aside him as being Lord in our hearts and be ready to give every man an answer or a defense of why we hold to the truth of his word, why they are changing and using their preference as truth? Lastly, no matter what group you get in, no matter what church you get in, no matter where you go, if they are dealing with problems in a city, a county, a church, in your home, if you don't look for what the truth of God's word say about that issue, if you feel everybody that's different got their own truth, you would dismiss God out of the equation, you would dismiss judgment out of the equation. You should flip that around and see what has God said about this? What has Yah said in similar situations? And let God be true and every man be a liar and deal with your problems and situations from his vantage point. This is how we rule. This is how we walk in truth. This is how we move away from the fattening, the gluttony of choosing our own preference of what we will digest and eat for truth. The Bible says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. When we eat from God's word, what comes out of us will be truth. With that, I'm stopping. I'm opening for discussion. If there's any discussion to be had, and we're not going to be dealing with perspectival thoughts and calling them truth. I don't know. I would. I haven't looked. Let's see. Let's say return to meeting. Oh, I got to stop share first. I don't see my camera working. For some reason, it clicked off. I didn't do it, not on purpose. Any anybody for discussion, rebuttal? I stopped on. I think the twentieth verse of of Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, but the twenty, the twenty, uh, yeah, Psalm, Psalm five and twenty. No. I did Psalm 50, then I went to Ephesians 5, uh, six, I think 16 through 20. But you went back, you were like referring to Psalm 50 when you were like the group and then all that. Yeah. yeah so, okay. okay, but I'm just thinking, what I'm saying, Monica, did you read it? Mm -mm. Because, because I wanted to bring up and I wanted to talk about the destruction of Jerusalem. I did the destruction of Israel on, on Tuesday. The destruction of Jerusalem, it really came down the way that it worked out. The most tired already said it was going to happen the way it worked down, worked out is one man, he just determined that ain't no truth. They both lied. And he brought on the destruction that was prophesied it was going to come because he, he already had some uncles that had rebelled against the most high. Yeah. But it's his uncle, his brothers that had they rebelled. I think it was his brother. Because he was about five of them. And the last one that went down there was Jehoah Chin. But he thought that it, he thought that they got different opinions. Already looking for your preference to be. Mm -hmm. Because even Jeremiah said. 
when y'all trying to kill me, said they didn't do that to Michael when Michael prophesied against this place. Y'all want to kill me. Want to kill me. Because y'all continually want people to say, we've been delivered, we've been saved to do these abominations. They told Jeremiah that. We're going to do sacrifices. Jeremiah said, when the most, well, he didn't say nothing about sacrifices. It's not one thing. What he said was obey my word. He don't want to do that. And this is where we are today. So many, so many denominations, so many fanciful pastors, so many people. They, you know, they got their music when they do their sermon, and the music is, you know, you get all what they call hype, and you jump up and down and run. But when it comes down to it, do we really speak as if the word of God is the truth? When he prophesies what's going to happen, to, are we still throwing his word behind our back and taking us some ice cream, whatever it is we want, and say, well, this is the truth. I like this. It goes down easy. Mm -hmm. I was born like this. So what's wrong with what someone number person murder? He can say, I was born like this. Well, I, was born, I was born doing what they call hate speech. He reminds me of Second Timothy. Mm. What was it for? We said the spirit that speaking expressly. That they won't endure sound doctrine, but will keep to themselves. Teachers have an itch in ears. Itch in ears, yeah. They wouldn't they will not endure sound doctrine. But before then, you have you have the charge. You have the charge that he's given to Timothy. Paul is giving Timothy the charge to just preach, do it, say it, the way we are seeing Micah say it, the way we, we know that Jeremiah said, you, you had some verses out of Jeremiah. It's four and two. Okay. So he it, it just it reminds me of that, and that the charge still stands, and that the reason why you need to preach be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, reprove, rebuke, reprove. Rebuke. <laughs> um, because there will be a time that people will ignore the truth and they will do like you say. It's subjective. It's whatever I say it is. It's whoever I like and whoever, you know, uh, pickles my fancy and makes my ears feel good and make me feel good in my conscience, then I'll take, I'll take that verse. And I'll, I'll buy Joyce Meyer's books and I'll buy Crystal Dollar's books because my goal is to be rich. And I'll go and I'll see uh, Mike Murdoch and I go, and you start realizing that you're heaping because there's something you want. Yep. And you're feeding your flesh. You're feeding your itch and ears with that. And you say, this I've determined that they're telling the truth. Because it it's, it's, it's subjective. It's about you. And I want to be rich. So then I'll do these things. A man-centered gospel will always allow the man to be the one that's going to come out on top. It will, a man-centered gospel will never tell you you may have to suffer. But when y'all told the Jeremiah, said, oh, he said, I'm going to deliver you. I said, what? I can read? If, they, if you're not in a place they have to be delivered now that means you go they gonna have you jeremiah that's what i said the hard part about being delivered is being called yeah. like being captured you know and having to suffer being plundered and being taken against your will and that's the hardest part deliverance sounds good but it, it sounds good when it's being said to you but that means i'm going to be captured you know it was horrible about what you what you said about heaping to themselves teaching. It came from preach the word. People often never realize that what they call the news is preaching. Mm -hmm. You get somebody get a suit on and a tie, and you listen to them. They read it, and I used to wonder why are they showing the news. I knew they showed it at twelve. Why are you showing it at three? At four, at five, yes. at seven, All day 10, long. 11. Why? And then why you're breaking news is because we're doing exactly like God. 
We're giving you words that we call truth. And we're propagandizing you to think what we want you to think. And what ends up happening is we don't want to think what the Most High God wants us to think. And so they took his method and they say, if you do this, you'll be happy. If you do this debauchery, you'll be happy. If you say it's a woman's right to choose and you kill babies, it's not, no, it's not killing babies. Because what we've done is we've given you our preference and we've told you that it's the truth. And in order for you to believe that, you have to take God, your word and you got to throw it behind your back, just like that. Same thing on any type of, the same thing about whenever people know that things have been plundered and taken from us. And they said, no, what you going to do if, if they give you restitution? What you going to do with the money? Who's going to do something with it first? You don't tell people what to do with what is theirs. It's been taken from them. You don't, you didn't tell Afghanistan. You didn't tell the Japanese. You did not tell the people when you took the stuff from the people from the Freedmen Bureau and you gave it back to the Confederates. You didn't tell them what to do with it. For such like places that we have gone and infiltrated. Do you tell the people what to do in Israel when you give them uh, millions of dollars a year? Do you? It ain't about what you want. It's about what is just according to God's word. Zac Zacchaeus said, whatever I've taken. And yet you'll have some people stand up because they don't like the truth of God's word. They'll give you their preference. I don't think so-and-so should be done. I don't think, who cares what you think? You're talking ice cream. I'm talking the word of God. Secondarily, they never polled and asked me, asked me or ask us, do we want to go to Iran? Do we want to go to Iraq? Do we want to have the Gulf War? Did they want to have the Korean War? Did they want to go in and fight in World War I, World War II? Did they want to do the War of 1812? They never asked, but when it comes to something about us, now, now let's poll people that we have been given information, ice cream to all the time. You don't do, you don't do, you don't do. Everything is equal. What happens is we don't want to do the justice of God and most evangelicals that are preachers, they don't want to do because they've already told you once you're saved, you're always saved. Why does it matter? If you're going to be consistent instead of arbitrary, if you're going to be consistent in what you're saying and not arbitrary, picking and choosing like you want to, then it's once you're saved, you're always saved. And no matter what you do, there's no need for you to have a jail. There's no need for any restitution that you've given to anybody else because you don't do justice. Zedekiah said, it sounds like y'all saying two different things. Neither one of y'all right. And I'm going to keep oppressing. I'm going to keep rebelling against the king of Babylon who Jeremiah told me I need to bow down to him. Bow down to him. He'll be good to you. No. The ice cream right here that I'm living off of is good. Go ahead, Gary. You like you had your mouth fixed to say something. Okay. <laughs> Why the song got to be crusty? I like, I like, I had never read that. I don't think I've ever read that. We'll see. Okay. He was splitting hair. So it was natural to choose what they call self preservation when you are going to have a book. Um, self, self, self preservation. I mean, that's 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 the flesh. You mentioned Eve. I mean, it, it's natural. I had a conversation a time ago with somebody who talked about natural. I said, well, that's wrong. It ain't supposed to be natural. It's supposed to be godly. We'll say supernatural. There's a lot of supernatural stuff, but you know, godly. So. I, I mean, I, I thought it was good. I don't think, well, I mean, I, I don't have anything to add. Okay. Young people, was there anything I said that was unclear? Was there anything I said that you repeat sometimes? I just love these young people. I hope they're not giving me ice cream. <laughs>
<laughs> they probably wouldn't say anything if they thought they were going to take it. That, that's How true. How did you do all of that? I, I, I was going to try to help out. So I, 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 record, I recorded for you, okay? Oh, yeah, but I mean, I, I, just, I, I hope I'm not off when I'm saying this second to him. I'm just second to him. No, you, no. Um, because I want to read it in the ESP. Okay. So he gives the charge. I charge you in the presence of Yah and of Yeshua HaMashiach, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready and see out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and, and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound or teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves themselves teachers to suit their own passions. That was that was Zedekiah. Yes. And will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Yes. And so to me, it's, it's, this is what the church has done. This is church now. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Be thoughtful, bro. Look at our church, because here I come. There's no, there's no charge to just tell the truth anymore. <laughs> I have a book at home called No Place for Truth. No Place. It is and talking about church world. When you talk about propaganda, I was listening. I, I, I'm not advocating for him, but th this was a really good video that I watched. And I've, I've watched a couple of videos. He'll tell the truth sometimes, Noam Chomsky. Okay. <laughs> and he talks about manufacturing consent. And what they do in the media and what they do, what governments do, is mm -hmm. that they, they, this is how they propagandize and they tell you what should be important to you. They tell you, see, they're selling, they're selling you, they're selling you on this this particular Ford or Chrysler or uh, Fruit Loops or Procter and Gamble, whatever it is. They're selling you and they're saying that this is gonna be good for you if you do this or you wear this these clothing or if you buy this product, this drug, and they're selling you and they're saying, well, it's good. This is really, really good. And they're selling that to you at, at the advantage of you, what you call the corporatocracy. You learn that word, Gary. And you understand that that is your government. That is your government. So when they tell you, you have to have certain things in order to be in society again, you got to wear certain things. You have to have certain medical procedures in order to be in society again. They're manufacturing consent. You don't really, it's like, I would just go out anyway. But no, you can't do that. That's irresponsible. And they'll tell you what you should care about. You should care about, do you know they're over here in Syria? and they gas their own people? You should care about that. Do you know they're over there in the Ukraine and they're doing certain things? You should care about that. But nobody's asking you whether or not it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. No, they're manufacturing your consent by just telling you it's bad. And you'll have people repeat these things. With, with, with fervor and fire in their throat. Expertise, As if they yeah, came expertise. up with it, like like there was a thought in their head, and they'll repeat it like that, and they'll tell you this person is bad. Oh yeah, this person did this, and this person did that, and so therefore, don't listen to them. Well, who's telling me that? You've done worse than that person. Why should I listen to you? I remember mean, one time I did a man like that. I told you about it, didn't I? Yeah. I don't like Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, touching these women and doing stuff. I said, 
And how many did you do more than that to? Right. You didn't have babies. You like, got a I'm, wife I'm, and a girlfriend or two. Help me, help me understand how you going to judge. Find me, some, find me something else like him making Israel a nation or something like that. But don't, some of y'all ought not talk about Shouldn't. people do, unless you let, unless you have stopped this yourself. Mm -mm. And, and that's it's really not the case. It's just that they told you that's what you should say. This is how you should feel. Whenever that name comes up, I'm going to tell you that we're so deeply brainwashed that they have us believing that, oh, you know, well, I could choose the side. I mean, I like the platform of the Republicans. But I like what they, what they call conservatives. Well, I like the, the progressives. Or, and they have you thinking you choosing the side. And they are all one. They have all agreed to dupe you yep. and to make you feel like you have some power. But, but, but Adrian, you got to at least say the Republicans believe in morals and they do that not. they and that they and that they believe in not abortions and they and they believe in you know heterosexuality. What's they your retort? Hey, who's the woman of the year? A dude, Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> Bruce mm -hmm. Jenner. And the other and the, and the always right, making fun of that. Let me say the left say, you know what, well, we hate the patriarchy and you know white supremacy and it's time out for that. But this is one of y'all own. Isn't this the height of white supremacy? White male patriarchy, where a white man can be the woman of the year. <laughs> How crazy is that? And could be the, the national champion in wrestling. And just and, 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 and just have something to say about everybody else, you know, that that that's of his kind that no, you can't capitalize on this. No, that's just bad. And and they have you thinking this that you're choosing the side and you're not. Well what what sticks out to me is is that while you gulping on that ice cream, the truth of the matter is. The most high has already told you what a man is. Yes. The most high has already told you what an injustice care. is. The most high God has already told you we had a baby inside the womb and could feel a person. And so you've thrown his word behind your back and look at what we're left with. Look at what we're left with. We're left, everybody picking their own ice cream and the issue is getting worse and worse. It's metastasizing. But what they're, what they're, when, when Black people are saying right now, you know you ought to pay us reparations. Mm -hmm. It ain't even the money. It's just that we say y'all have done wrong. And we're going to keep saying you've done wrong repeatedly. And it's like, well, you know, that's been so long ago. Well, what slave were ever, was ever in a position that they could ask for reparations? Uh, it was illegal for them to be in it court. Was, yes, they couldn't even, you couldn't even have a court case. They couldn't testify. And when they did get something in the Freedmen's <laughs> Bureau, what happened? They got they, land. <laughs> they took it back. And gave They them stole money. it. And they paid reparations to the people in D.C. too. And by the like, slaves they lost. And with, with the Black Codes and Jim Crow, and everything you've done, when have we ever been in a position to say, we want reparations? Even 50, 50 some odd years ago, y'all murdered this man who y'all celebrate. Oh, when we celebrate Dr. King, he said we coming to get our check and you murdered him. He asked for reparations less than 60 years ago. Yeah. You and under, he got deleted. You you undergirded your white peasantry with seeds and with mechanate with mechanized equipment. You taught him and you gave you undergirded him with low cost loans. And he, he said he told him. Because, and what, what, the word that stuck out was undergirded. And what we're saying is we don't like you and you're evil. And we're gonna let the world know that you're still evil. Even just having a discussion, as much as you think you're doing some sort of good by, let's have a forum on reparations and let's get a committee and let's put it on the talk shows. You're showing your lineage, lineage of evil. You're showing you're going you go, you're doing what uh, uh, Messiah said. Fill up the measure of your fathers. Yes. He said it another way too. He said, 
you say they were your fathers and you wouldn't have done it, but you say they're your fathers. Yes, and you're still doing it. Yes. You still say, well, you don't. And I've never seen a group of people punished for being successful in spite of the oppression and repression. And you punish, well, y'all do a scene like y'all doing okay. Well, you know, during the reconstruction time, black people did so much better. And it's like, you know why? Because you we your hand wasn't on us. And you saw it and you and killed you, us. And you didn't like it. And it's you we didn't like that as long as we're by ourselves and we have our own, you don't like it. See, this is what it said. It's like, oh no, we can't let you be alone. We can't let you get by yourself with some capital because that's going to get, I, we can't let that be. We'll seed you. Just Cause... like they did in the Bible. We'll make it where you can't get your shipments in. Not yes. only will we make it where you can't get your shipments in, we can talk people in that you want to do for them. We can cut you off. Or we'll burn your places down. Yes. We'll burn it. Like, we'll no, bomb you. We'll, we'll put disease in your neighborhood. We'll take mosquitoes, federal agents, it took in what is called set, what is called Carverville. It's in my book. Took mosquitoes in and told the black people that they were trying to catch mosquitoes. They actually took impregnated mosquitoes with disease and gave those people disease. Yeah. Watch the documentary. Truth matters. And the moment you let people tell you truth don't matter and you put that in your soul, it's got a consequence. Or Ideas they can't figure have... out why they can't kill you completely. We the real baby. Get rid of you. Yes. <laughs> they can't do it. And they have a special hatred for black people. It's just so special. Like, and we don't do anything to them. No, we just exist. Girls. Yes. I was like, what do you know about us that we don't know about us? What advantage do we have? Do you, well, you know, y'all have some advantage. What's the advantage that we have? According to Peter Nygaard, he likes to take women's men menstrual cycle and they would make stuff out of it to make themselves younger, their placenta and all yes. of that. Yes. And those women on that video, they were laughing. He was talking about how beautiful and how wonderful they were. And, and then he started, tell, he started telling them how much they pay for each part of their body part or whatever. And their face was like... Yes. P-U-T-E-R-N-Y-G-A-R-D. Peter Nygaard. They I know they probably serum. felt like, am I going to get out of here alive? Yeah. But they treat us like we have some advantage. And, oh, no, we, we, can't, we can't give you anything. You have, you have an advantage. What is it? The most high. You know we have that. You know we have him. You know. And you all the time trying to get us to believe that he's not with us, but he is. You all the time trying to get us to follow the science. <laughs> and this science is arbitrary. And it's arbitrary. And the problem with that being arbitrary is people literally think that it's been set down in stone. I tell you. We 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 need we need help. Yes. We need help, and that help is going back to the truth. Yes. We're trying to be everybody else. We we need to stop. So the day's lesson was basically the alchemy. It is. Uh -huh. And see, they get the right to change anything that they say, and they never should question it. When the Bible says the job changes not, but they can change anything. Uh -huh. And it's the biggest gaslighting that you can find. Yes. Gaslighting. And did I say that? Did I uh -huh. say that? You heard it wrong. And this, see, we call it progressing and think that we're progressing. And I'm like, do you understand? Uh -huh. No, it's not progressing. In, in literature and in art and what they call the humanities, they call it movement and it always moves you further away. 
So you'll see it called enlightenment. You'll see it called the dark ages. You'll see it called you'll see it called different things, but they're called movements. So they're doing the Hegelian thing, and now they call it call that movement. They call movement for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I didn't know that. In, in French, it's called um, I think it's movement. Everywhere it sounds bad. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you're moving mm-hmm. for the way, and like the scripture said, "Be not moved away." And I'm from the steadfastness. Yeah, don't be moved away, but they'll move you away. So even in what they call classicism. You see that it's supposedly close to what they'll call, of course, the church. And the church would have like a, not even a seed, let's say, an inkling of something that will go to the scriptures that they change and change it, but they'll call that the church. So if you get people who really like, okay, I don't feel like this at all, you don't tell them, then it moves further away from it. But again, look at the names of it, vanguardism. Social, uh, just look at it. Mm-hmm. But it's moving you for a way. And just like you said, it's always somebody telling you. And art is nothing but me being God because I just paint it like a yeah. Just raise it like a mm-hmm. I know, Whether it's plastic, art, oil, whatever, it's, it's the same thing. But we are well, I mean, it's innocent and violent. We are God. It don't matter. So we'll change, we'll change where, like you said, you still, like, uh, we'll. we'll you're taking on taking on covetousness in um was it um sin Deuteronomy is it yeah Exodus I'm, I'm thinking ten I'm thinking of Decalogue but it's the chapter okay yeah so I'm I'm mixing those two things but you're changing like even the Catholic Church they split one of, they took was it um they made one two and took out oh, idolatry no. thought that you should be making and something like that. They made one, and I'm, I know y'all know, but they made yeah. one too and took out another, so it looked like it's still pink. Yeah, they they took. They out, they, they, out, they left. No yeah, they got image. rid of that. We have no graven image. Yeah. So, but I mean, that's what we see is we eat. That's that's exactly what I'm saying. Well, you make yourself afraid, and you say, uh, uh-uh. uh. I'm not gonna allow you to tell me what's right or wrong. You do too much wrong. All the time. I'm gonna allow the most high to tell me. And there's a kingdom that you don't see, but I'm gonna keep talking about. And it's the kingdom of righteousness, and it's the kingdom of justice, and it's the kingdom of judgment. And I'm gonna keep saying it. And that's one thing that they could never quell. Black folks always, we gonna keep saying it. We gonna let's keep saying this is wrong. Let's keep saying this is an injustice. And we're not relying on your laws, your your fabricated laws to tell us, uh, you know, other people have done it. We don't care, it's still wrong. It was wrong wrong. when they did it, it's wrong when you do it. That doesn't, you It's just like, I'm gonna minimize it and say, well, everyone. Everybody had some form of slavery. But when did we enslave you? Name it. But but you say that to minimize and say, well, it's not wrong because a lot of people did it. That's not true. It's wrong because God said it's wrong. And that's it right And that is the kingdom that they don't want. We don't have a whole lot of weapons. But we can pull down strongholds. We can. Yes, and every high thing. Yes. It exalts us up. We have it. our voice in whatever space we're in. We the light. We have the truth. Let's tell it. This is his kingdom. This is his world. This is his world. And that's the thing. They go, well, we're going to try to control you in some sort of way so that you'll stop talking. Just stop talking. Just don't say that. Or we're going to tell you what to say and how to say it. Because what we're doing with that is is, is alchemy. We think we can change. If I say he, him, and these are his, this, these are their pronouns, their and them. <laughs> and you think you can change something. That doesn't make that person. Hey, but, but what we it do, we, but we can get there to the place where you can uh, get that consent. And we can make it a law. We can. You're gonna consent to it, and it's and this is the problem that they have with us. It's because you've done it to us for so long. You told us we were nobody. 
You told us that we, well, you were no y'all to me, Celine. You were like, what? You're not even people. You don't have souls. You've been saying these things. Yes. And, and you, why would we allow you to just tell us what to say now? And you said science said it. Yes. And you manufactured all of these things. You just made it all up. And now you're going to tell me what to say? Yes, because I own you. No. But they that's the one thing they can't take. That's the one thing they want. I just, just don't talk about it. When you get people who have done you wrong, just on a smaller scale, they don't want to talk, do they? No. No, so I don't want to talk about it. Because I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to feel the culpability of what no, I've done. No, because there's power. There's power there. You, you know I'm going to say something that is going to tear your world apart. And you don't want to hear it because you want it to stay just as perfect as you think it is because it's not. Well, you made a statement one time. You said people want to feel like they're good. They do. Please don't say I'm not good. Just don't say it. Just don't say this is wrong. We can get along. No, we have to. We've been done the wrongest. How dare we not say it? And every time you turn around, well, somebody else will say, somebody else will say, but we're talking about you. Yes. This country and these laws. Well, let's go ahead and close out. I thank everybody that joined us today. I thank the young people that stay here with us. May the most have blessed them and keep them. Make his face shine upon them, be gracious to them as well as us and grant us his shalom. Thank you everybody that joined us and let's deal with truth and leave that figurative ice cream mm. alone. It doesn't, it doesn't love us. It'll make our heart fat and gross and the most high God will not be able to reach our impenitent heart. Goodbye you all. Thank you so much for joining.